Father God, we come before you thanking you for this gathering. We also thank you, Father, for the online friends. We have come to hear your teachings on crossover from 2022 to 2023. We thank you already. We have started learning from the yearly theme that irrespective of all trials, all tribulations, we need to lay our hearts to welcome all and accept it as well with our souls, for we know we live on earth. We praise and worship you whilst a lot is happening on earth. Well knowing we pray for salvation to our lives. We kindly ask for heavenly ears, so we learn how some biblical icons cross over from the past coming into the new. We ask to become the new in your field, Father. We bring all into your hands, Father, the sick, those who have passed on, those in jail, those without, those who believe in you and who do not. We heartily ask for wisdom to keep preaching and teaching your word so that they might hear and believe in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome, everybody. I'm taking you into 2023 theme, which is it is well, it is well with my soul. So I am continuing from uh, the theme for the 1st of January. I'm just going forward, uh, showing you how it is, if, it, if everything is well with your soul. So I'm going to explain uh, heaven bound being the theme for this week, I mean for this month, is heaven bound. Because if we say it is well, it is well with my soul. What we are saying here is irrespective of anything that has happened in your life, irrespective of all trials, all tribulations, you are still going to heaven. Because what matters in your life, it is salvation. So we now come with the theme, heaven bound and our weekly theme is crossover so i'm going to read uh x9 this is uh i'll start from verse one so i'm reading from the new king james version verse one the damascus road so converted then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if found, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed. He came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gods. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they held him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. So this is a, a passage about uh, Paul from Acts. So who authored uh, the book of Acts? Luke and Acts are authored by Luke, as seen in Luke 1, 
this one to four, x one, this is one to three. So who was Luke? Luke was one of our apostles, our traveling companions, because in Acts 16 to 10, it shows that uh, Luke was uh, one of those traveling companions. Uh, the narrative changes from the third person they to first person we, and that is, that is in Acts 16, this is uh, 10 to 17. This indicated Luke had joined, joined uh, Paul on the journey. From Paul's letters, we see that Luke was uh, a physician. He was one of uh, Paul's uh, companions. That's Luke 4, this is uh, 14. Tim 4, this is 11. When Luke writes, he directs his books to one man called Theophilus. That is in Luke 1, this is 1 to 4. Theophilus was Luke's patron. He was a wealthy person, wealthy person who funded Luke's research and writing of his two books, Luke and Acts. Notice that Luke calls uh, Theophilus the most honorable Theophilus. That is in Luke 1, this is, one to, this is 3. The book of Acts, where we are taking today's uh, Bible verse, is the second volume of Luke's two-volume work. He refers to the book of Luke as the first narrative, describing what Jesus did until his ascension. Luke 1, this is 1 to 2. In Acts, the narrative uh, continues with the Holy Spirit coming to empower the disciples in proclaiming Jesus to both the Jews and the Gentiles. X was written before Paul was released from prison in Rome, X 28, 16 to 31. Luke appears to have been a disciple of Paul as it shows whilst we read the book of X. We have read Acts 9 and we see Luke is relating Paul's conversion to Jesus Christ. We know Luke has this information because uh, he was a traveling companion of Paul. Paul testified all his conversion as has been said by Paul. Paul gave an account of his conversion when he was giving evidence to King Agrippa whilst he was under house arrest. That's in Acts 26, verses 1 to 8. So we've heard about Paul from, uh, from Luke. But who is this Paul? Who is this Paul? We meet Apostle Paul in the New Testament. That's Acts uh, 7, verse 58. This is at the stoning of uh, a follower of Jesus Christ, who was Stephen who also became a first Christian martyr. He is Paul who introduces himself by the nature that brought him into God's work. So in 1 Timothy 1, verses 1 to 3, Paul says uh, he is an apostle of Christ by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. So what he means is, yes, he became an apostle but it is after Jesus is ascended to heaven and he only became an, an apostle because of uh, the grace of Jesus Christ. So he wasn't only 12 disciples as you can see. So reading what he is saying, you already know he is speaking from the spirit of the truth. He is speaking from the Holy Spirit. He has been sent by God because he didn't see Jesus Christ. They were not together. So 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9 says, uh, Paul says, For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle. He's just testifying what I just said, that uh, he is not one of the disciples that were with Jesus Christ. We also hear Apostle Paul, he started off as Saul from Tarsus. Nothing much is stated in the Bible about his family. Yes, he came from Tessus, but he grew up in Jerusalem. According to Acts, 
Paul stated, I am a Jew born in Tarsus, Syria, but brought up in the city, Jerusalem, at the feet of Gamaliel, educated strictly according to our ancestral law, that's the Jewish law, but zealous for God. Just all of you who are, in, who are here today, he was just saying this, just giving people his history, that he was Jewish, but yes, he was born in, uh, in Jerusalem. Whilst he came from Tarsus, that's in Acts 22 verse 3, and also Acts 21 verse 39. So, as so he was well educated, I'm sure we can see all that because of the 13 books in the New Testament, out of the 27 that we have. He appears to have been multilingual, he spoke Greek, Aramaic, he spoke Hebrew as well, that's Acts 18 verse 3. He himself was a tent maker as well, who received both Jewish and Greek education. Paul's letters were written to the congregations he helped to form in different cities through the Roman Empire. So his letters were addressed to, I know we know he wrote Galatians, Corinthians, Romans, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, and Philemon. This is how great he was. As such, each, each epistle, each letter that he wrote to those congregations, he specifically tailored them to the city that he was sending them to. He also tailored those letters to the churches that he found in the Roman Empire. So before, before converting to Jesus Christ, he was on his way to becoming a rabbi. So what's a rabbi? A Jewish scholar or a teacher, especially one who studies or one who teaches a Jewish law. So was a zealous man of Jewish faith. But before his conversion, Paul initially opposed all followers of Jesus Christ. And he wanted to end the spread of uh, the gospel of Jesus. So this is how he's well known. He was really well known in this area. Now let's get let's get back to uh, Luke's narration, as is the one we are reading from today. So Luke writes about Paul's conversion to Jesus whilst he was on the way to Damascus. Luke, Luke is telling us uh, of Paul's crossover to Jesus Christ. So from Stephen's death. Paul was present. That's Acts 7. We see Paul in Acts 9, where we are reading today. The day he is converted to Jesus. The day he has planned, he is going to speak to those who are following Jesus to stop. So, because we say that our theme is crossover, we are also going to see Paul's crossover from him being the fighter of Jesus Christ's gospel and to him being the follower of Jesus Christ. Because studying this process of becoming a crossover is also going to help you and me whilst we journey from 2022 to 2023. There are a lot of things we're going to learn from him. So the process of our crossover, what is crossover? It's just moving from one place to another. Yes, crossing from the unknown world into the known world. The unknown world is the earthly world that we decide to live in, the world of sin. And the known world is this world where we are all bound to God, to Jesus Christ, where we decide using our hearts, now I'm going to work for Jesus. I'm going to accept Jesus. I am going to say Jesus is my all. That's the world full of uh, salvation. Yes, the creator will lead the journey to, to a proper place that you go when your spirit leaves your body. God knows where to send you. He knows how you are supposed to live life on earth and how that life he chooses for us will make us remain righteous for the final journey to salvation. Crossing over is then committing your life 
in Jesus Christ. You commit your life in Jesus Christ. Paul says in 9, Acts 9 verse 6, Lord, what do you want me to do? So that's the biggest question to ask God as we are moving from 2022 to 2023 and further. You are to ask God, God, what do you want me to do? Because you want to do things that God wants you to do. You want to do things that Jesus Christ wants you to do. Because if you do as they want, as the God, as the Godhead wants, as the Trinity wants, it means then you are righteous. It means you remain into this world of going to heaven. So you, you ask God for the specifications of the job he's calling you for. Because this is what Paul is doing now. So when God answers, his answers, you list them down as your yearly resolutions. Because I know we continue to talk about yearly resolutions. So you say, I've been running my life, but now God, please run this life as it is yours. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That's 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. So we've just spoken of crossover from the bad side to the good. Because Paul was coming from the bad side that he wanted to stop her, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wanted to stop Christianity. And now he was converting to being good, to accepting Jesus Christ. But you should also know that crossover, you could also be crossing over from the good side and going to the bad. And that one is very scary. Because when you leave church to nowhere, I call it to nowhere. When you leave church, you're just going nowhere, going to nowhere. Some people leave church and stay in the world. So if you leave church and you stay in the world, that's a crossover to the bad. You cross over to the bad, crossing over to nowhere. When you are in church physically, but in spirit, you fight as, pres as prescribed by Jesus Christ, you have also crossed to the bedside because we all go to church. But as I am in church, I'm not going along with the teachings that Jesus Christ has given in his sermons for, for Christians to live according to that. It also means you've crossed, I mean, to the, to the bedside. The crossover is not good. So Luke is writing about course, Paul's uh, crossover to Jesus. Paul is moving from the dark into light, as Jesus said, he is the light, John 8 verse 12. When Paul was near Damascus, he saw light, light shone around him, that's Acts 9 verse 3. We said crossing over in spirit means coming from darkness into light, that's what we said. So Paul knew crossing over to Jesus Christ. He had a calling for God. God's calling is the call he does to you so that you come and work for him. You can have this call in you, yes, but maybe you fail to reach this point of manifesting. You fail to reach the extent of manifesting it. So this manifestation of that calling is what we are now going to call crossover to Jesus Christ mother's womb and called me by his grace so Paul is saying oh God called me my calling started when I was in the mother's womb he says uh, he was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles so he's saying he was sent not only to Jews he was sent to the Gentiles he was sent to everyone my immediate response was not to consult any human being. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. I went to Arabia. So he went, he went just like Jesus Christ did when he was tested. He just went in the, he went just for prayers. He went for prayers. You know, Jesus went for 40 days, 40 nights. So that's what he did as well. He went into fasting for a period of time before he then decided, now I'm going to start preaching. And now he's telling this Bible verse just to show people that, well, he was called by Jesus. But through that calling, 
there was a manifestation of the crossover when he fell when he was going to Damascus. So Paul is in darkness, as we see in, nine, in Acts 9, verse 1, saying, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if, if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Paul, remember, Paul had seen Stephen who was following Jesus Christ preaching in Jerusalem. And Paul saw Stephen being stoned to death by Jewish people as a way of spreading, I mean, stopping the spread of Jesus' ministry. Yet they were, stop, they were stopping Stephen from preaching and doing miracles because if he did miracles it means the ministry of Jesus was going to grow so they just decided to stone him so as they are stoning him Apostle Paul is there he was sold at that time he was sold at that time Paul is participant to this this happening seems to have given him more courage and then from that happening he then arranges a trip to go to Damascus to do more Christian persecution because now he's got the strength. He has seen people persecuting Christians. He has seen the stoning of Stephen and now he has more strength to go and persecute more. So Damascus is 150 miles north of Jerusalem. But because Paul hasn't crossed over to Jesus, he sees that it's a near walk. Is going to do that and he's going to complete this wholesome job according to the Jewish people of persecuting people remember Paul is on the Jewish side he is Jewish but he is also a Pharisee the Pharisees formed the largest and most influential religious political party in New Testament times so those were the Pharisees they are constantly depicted in the Gospels as opponents of Jesus Christ and the early Christians. So he was amongst that group that was a political party of Jesus Christ. So Pharisees are just like many groups that we see around. I'm not going to mention any names. You know those groups that keeps on fighting um, Christians today. They persecute Christians. They kill them just for praising Jesus Christ. So these Pharisees were opponents of Jesus Christ. I was saying, I'm sure you know of those other groups in this world that go against Christians, that persecute them, that kill them, not giving them time to praise uh, the Lord, to praise Jesus Christ. So here yeah, they were Pharisees. And he was a Pharisee, Paul, he was a Pharisee. But I was also asking that if you are fighting Jesus, if you are fighting the ministry that Jesus Christ brought on earth, are you, you, are you one of the opponents? Those are things you should look at whilst you are saying you are crossing over from 2022 to 2023. Because yes, you could be in church. Because when we see church, we know church was planted by Jesus Christ. It's one of the things that Jesus Christ in Matthew 16 told the disciples that uh, I'm going to go, but I will plant a church. He said that. So if you are fighting what Jesus planted on earth, are you not in that group of being an opponent? Are you not that group coming up as Pharisees? Because you could be a Pharisee, not knowing that you are a Pharisee, but maybe it could be in your blood. Those are things to look at because we need to look at how can you really cross over to Jesus Christ and not crossing over to the dead crossing over to being the opponent right paul in philippians 4 5 he said do not spread unhappiness to others but then we see that uh, in x6 when the jewish people are angry they are angry at uh, stephen who is spreading the word about jesus christ they stone him and uh, Paul is there 
he is participating because he is seeing that all oh, these people are now accepting Christianity and we are Jewish. So as they are doing that, the Jewish people, they are spreading this unhappiness even in Paul, even in Paul himself. So we see him later in Philippians 4, 5, he's telling everybody that, uh, please do not spread unhappiness to others. So if you are unhappy about anything in church, please pray and see those people who were told by Jesus, I mean, who were told by God, who were given that ranking in church to lead the church. Go to them. Do not spread to your friends, to the community, to everybody around you in church who doesn't have anything to do with what you are unhappy about. So just remember that. Do not spread unhappiness to others. Yes. So now when Paul leaves uh, Jerusalem and is going to Damascus, he is leaving, but these threats that were being done when uh, Stephen was being stoned, he carries them to Damascus. They are full in his heart. He really knows he's really angry because he's gotten this unhappiness from the Jewish leaders. So when you are unhappy and you pass these things to the next person, they can become more angry. They can commit sin. And this is why now Paul was now going to commit sin because he had he had just borrowed this unhappiness had come in him. So let's learn this. Philippians verse, Philippians 4 verse 4. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Always rejoice in front of everybody. Rejoice. If you rejoice, you cross over to Jesus and you stay to Jesus. Because you can cross over today. You can change from being bad. You become good. And then you become very unhappy, you're committing sin now, you don't repent. It means now you're crossing over to being bad again. So rejoice in the Lord as always. Those who rejoice in the Lord remain good ministries. They remain good communities. They become good individuals. So do not be that church. Do not be that ministry. Do not be that community. Do not be that individual that spreads unhappiness to people. Yes, ministries who go on social media and then you spread the bad about everything else, about everybody. You, 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 you give false teaching. And this is why Paul is saying, remember, remember not to spread unhappiness. So Damascus was full of Jewish people. Paul then felt with the first movement of Jesus Christ's ministry at that time, more Jewish people could join because they were so full in Damascus, these Jewish people. So now he was traveling on time. He was racing for time to go and stop them. So this is the verse 2 of X9 that says, so if he found any who were of the way, when he says of the way, he means of the way of wanting to join Jesus' ministry. So he wanted to stop them from crossing over to Jesus Christ. He didn't want them to cross over to the good side. He didn't want them to believe in Jesus Christ. Because when you believe in Jesus Christ, it then becomes a very good crossover. As he is walking, Acts 9 verse 4, as Paul is walking, going into Damascus, he falls to the ground. The crossover to Jesus is just started in Paul. This is the minute Jesus Christ says to Paul, So, so, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? When I saw the word Lord, I thought, Oh, so Paul already knew Jesus Christ was Lord. But no, it could be not that, but it could be that. Um, Saul seems to have felt how sensible and how divine this light that was shining on, on him was. And then, you know, on feeling it, we know he could have shaken. Something was going on inside him. So when he answers, he says, who are you, Lord? He knows this calling of this person, this must be a very big person. 
this might be somebody really big this might this might be a king when he says who are you lord that's first that first lord actually tells us he had a calling he had a calling although he was following judaism but inside him what was left was for god to direct him exactly where he was supposed to do god's work but inside him god had already called him god had already called him so in in acts 9 verse 6 luke reports paul was trembling and astonished yes so in the sensible divine shaking paul is now trembling he's astonished so this means this divine light he saw in verse 3 could have shaken his spirit that's how i felt when he saw this light when he saw it it was brighter than daylight it could have shaken his spirit so he is surprised he is shaken he is wondering and as all that is happening i could see a crossover to jesus crossovers to jesus are very different some crossovers manifest in a physical way shown to the community just like paul's one those who were working with him they could see something is happening he has fallen they could hear jesus speaking but they can't see anyone yes so some crossovers they happen in a quiet way yes so do not be worried if your crossover happened and it was all that quiet still god was there right sometimes it happens quietly and you do not openly manifest this discipleship but you will already be a disciple but let's look at paul why his was being seen by the community being seen by the people that he was with let's look at him he is well in no he is well known in jerusalem and beyond remember we said in the beginning he was soul of tarsus he was a student rabbi when he crossed over to jesus he was a strict and conscientious Pharisee. He was a protege of Gamaliel, one of the leading rabbis in Jerusalem, with an influential seat of the Sanhedrin. Before his, conversation, his conversion to Christ, Saul was an ardent persecutor of the fledgling church. So everybody knew this. Everybody knew this. Yes, with all he was, he was well known. You can see he was very influential among his surroundings. So this type of manifestation, man manifestation in his crossover was needed. Yes, he's falling on, on the ground with everybody hearing somebody's talking to him and not knowing who is talking to him. All that noise was needed for people to see because he was influential. So what was your manifestation like? Paul's one became, I mean, Paul's one came seeing light that was brighter than the normal daylight. It came with a physical blindness because we are told he fell to the ground. After falling to the ground, he, he then started hearing uh, the voice of uh, Jesus, who is asking, who are you, Lord? Yes. So let's talk about this blindness. Remember, he was reaching Damascus to go and persecute God's children. This blindness called Saul to start listening to Jesus Christ. Yes, because he is now blind. He can't see. So he has to listen now. He's going to listen more. He's been made to listen. Yes. This blindness made Paul to start believing in Jesus Christ because he never believed. Now, because he can't see and he doesn't know whether this blindness is going to go and he doesn't even know whether if he gets treated, all this will get sorted out. But he just says, now I can't see. So the only thing is to listen to this person. It is to start learning from this person. So this blindness, it gave Paul this skill of learning from God. Now he had to start learning from what this person is saying. He had to start learning what Jesus Christ was saying. This blindness made Paul to, re to also realize no human being on earth can fight and win 
when they are fighting with God. You can't really fight God. You can't fight your creator and end up winning. Are you fighting God in similar ways? Because sometimes you think you are not. But you, if you go to church and you spread unhappiness to everybody in church, it means you are fighting God. It means you are still crossing over to the bad side. You will not win if you are fighting God. You will not win. Just see uh, Paul's uh, conversion story. We are being taught we can never be clever than God. So you have heard over, you have heard now Paul's uh, crossover to Jesus. What was happening to you and it shows you what was happened, what has happened to you and then it really shows you Jesus Christ is in you. Yes, because you've seen that uh, Paul had a fall and he became blind and uh, he can only hear Jesus. But what also happened to you? You need to think what happened to you when you were crossing over to Jesus Christ. It's the beginning of uh, 2023 and we are learning how Paul became Christ-like. But the good question is, have you become Christ-like yourself? Have you crossed over to Jesus Christ? Is that makes a real crossover to Jesus Christ? Because crossovers are different. Crossovers are very different, like I said. So going back to Paul, he's told in Acts 9, 6, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So that's Jesus Christ now. He's giving orders to Paul. He's just not emptying his bag quickly. Because being Jesus, he could have said, Arise, I know you are fallen, but arise and go into Damascus and to do this, this, this and that. Yes, he has been told what to do, the this and that is there. But it's not the this and that that I will be expecting from Jesus Christ because we all think Jesus knows exactly what Paul has to do. Yes, he knows. But now Jesus is going to show us exactly who he is. He likes working amongst people. He's not going to come himself. You see him physically. You see him as spirit through other people. So this is what now Jesus is telling Paul. Arise and go into Damascus and you will be told what you must do. So he arises and he goes and he sees somebody else who's not Jesus. Yes, he sees somebody else who's not Jesus. That's Acts 9, Acts 9 verse 6. But somehow we see that uh, the duties that Paul is supposed to do when he gets into Damascus, he's already, he's already being told. Yes, because going to see someone else, just you getting up, being told by Jesus, you're going to see someone else. It is a duty because, you know, I had fallen, now I'm getting up, I'm going to go into Damascus and see someone. Already it is a duty. So that is now to show us that when somebody really crosses over, they are listening to Jesus. They are doing what Jesus is telling them to do. They are believing and they are learning. So those are things to also note in ourselves. Are we listening? Are we learning from Jesus? Are we believing in him? Are we doing everything that Jesus has said we should do? Because with us, maybe we could have asked, who is going to tell me all that when I get to Damascus? But Paul is just listening and is now just following each and every word that Jesus is telling him to do. Yes. So can you see that scenario that uh, Jesus is welcoming Paul as he has crossed over to him? Because Jesus is now talking to him, the conversation is going to is going to Paul and is coming back to Jesus. But he further teaches him to welcome others in his ministry. Because he's not saying, when you get to Damascus, I will be waiting for you and I will be talking to you. He says, when you get there, you will see a man. And this man will tell you what to do. So he is already showing a poll that if you come to my field, if you come to my kingdom, 
you will you have to work with others you're going to start working with ananias ananias is going to tell you what i want you to do so jesus is going to tell ananias Ananias is then going to tell Paul. So he's passing on of messages so that we stop fighting in church. You have to work with others. When you really cross over to Jesus Christ, you must be willing to work with praise and worship, work with elders, work with other pastors, work with prophets, work with everybody who is gathered to fellowship in church. Work with everyone. So this is what jesus christ is telling paul oh you have crossed over i'm welcoming you but as i'm welcoming you you also have to start working with ananias and you should also know that ananias will be telling you things that he's getting from the spirit you are not going to say no paul because if you say no it means whatever you're going to tell people people will also say it's wrong because we haven't seen each other physically, you are only hearing me because I am the spirit of truth residing in you and you are speaking from the spirit of truth and you should also know that when Ananias is telling you what to do, it's the spirit of truth that is speaking in him. So it's all working together, working together for the best, working together for the good. You should know that we need to work together in the house of the Lord. So Paul is now taken, you know, by the, his disciples that he had, the people who were also accompanying him to, to Damascus. They, are, they took him to, to Ananias' house. So Jesus is now teaching Paul that himself as Jesus, he can speak to anyone at any time. <laughs> he can send different individuals through his spirit of truth yes so he promised this remember in john 16 verses 12 to 6 verses 12 to 16. so john 16 says verses 12 says i have much more to tell you but you cannot bear it now so jesus knew he was going to come as evidence now we can see he has come into paul Paul has fallen to the ground and he is now hearing this spirit of truth speaking through him. So this is what Jesus was saying here. Jesus goes on to say, but when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. Yes, he will guide you to all truth. So as Paul is on the ground, he is hearing the spirit of truth talking. And this spirit of truth is now telling him, now you need to get up. Now you need to make steps into Damascus. When you get to Damascus, you will see Ananias. And when you see Ananias, he will tell you what you must do. So that's the spirit of truth. So, you know what? If you have really crossed over, you will believe the spirit of truth. Because if Paul hadn't believed, he wasn't go to go to Ananias. If he was going to stop going to Ananias, it then meant he was not going to. He was blind, remember, and he, I know he didn't know he was going to see, because this now later happened. But between me and you, we already know that if Paul had said no to the spirit of truth, he wasn't going to see. He was going to remain blind. So you will remain blind if you don't listen to the spirit of truth. If you don't listen to Jesus, you will remain blind in some areas of your life because you have a life. I know when we say crossover, we say crossover into 2023 and then we start speaking of material things. But now it's not about material things. As we have crossed over, we are crossing over to Jesus who we know is the biggest hope that we have because he has promised that when our spirit leaves our bodies, we will be with him in heaven. So when we are praying like this, we really have to accept what the spirit of truth says because this spirit of truth is the one that will take us to heaven. Following what it says means you will be 
going along with Jesus Christ means you will be with Jesus Christ in you. So you have to follow the spirit of truth. So Jesus goes on to say, he will not speak on his own. So he's referring to this spirit of truth. But he will speak what he hears. And he will declare you to things that are coming. See, he says the spirit of truth will declare to you things that are coming. He will foretell. This is what Jesus is saying. So we can see it here with Paul in Acts 9. He is falling to the ground. He is getting up. And then the spirit of truth is telling him, now you have to go to Damascus. There, further there, you will see Ananias. So this is what Jesus was saying here. The spirit will foretell what is in the future. And Jesus says, he will glorify me. That's the spirit of truth. It will glorify Jesus because he will take from what is mine. So whatever the spirit of truth comes to say will be coming from Jesus Christ. So this is for us all. If there is a prophet, if there is somebody who's been sent to speak to you, if they say, oh, Jesus is saying this. If you say no, just know that you are saying no to Jesus. Yes, because Jesus is saying the spirit of truth will take from what is mine and declare it to you. So all things that come as prophecy, those things have been taken from Jesus Christ. And Jesus goes on to say, everything that the father has is mine. So he is speeding up. It's the spirit of truth. And it is me, Jesus Christ. Now we are two. And now he's mentioning the Father. He is actually bringing it out here that uh, there is a uh, three in one. He actually declares they are a Trinity. He declares here they are a Godhead. And he goes on to say, For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Yes. The spirit of truth will declare what Jesus Christ is saying to you. So Paul has been taught about the Godhead, the three persons in one, the one God, the Trinity. He has been taught already. This is what we are hearing. Yes. God loves you, brethren. That's what I'm going to say as we are seated here. Just know that yeah, Paul was being taught by Jesus. But you listening to these stories, you should know that God loves you. Paul was going to persecute Christians as a way of stopping his spread. But God said to Paul, no, you can't do that. So God is saying the same to you today. You can never fight God. You can never fight your creator and end up winning. You cannot spread the bad about people. Are you spreading the bad about people? Are you spreading the bad about the church? Are you spreading the bad about anyone else surrounding you? And you think you will win. You will not win. Can you see that how when Paul was going over to go and persecute uh, those in Damascus, God said, no, this is when Jesus Christ uh, came and then uh, he then converted to Jesus. Now you need to stop. You need to come over. You need to cross over. You need to cross over to Jesus Christ. This is your time. If you've been speaking bad about the church, if you've been speaking bad about your family, if you've been speaking bad about your community, about anyone else, God is saying no. God is saying this is the time for you to cross over to Jesus Christ. You cannot persecute and kill people's hearts because we end up saying oh i didn't kill anybody i didn't murder you know when you do bad things and people are sad they are not happy you have killed their hearts so people god is saying no stop spreading unhappiness and stop killing people's hearts you shouldn't kill people's hearts yes god says he wants those people don't sadden them. He wants those people to work for working to salvation. Yes, so listen. God fought 
in Damascus. And he is going to fight you as well. <laughs> he is going to fight you if, if you keep fighting him. Don't fight with the church. Don't fight with anybody trying to spread the word of God. Stop talking things that will put people away from the word of God. Always rejoice in church. If you keep rejoicing in church, it means you are crossing over to Jesus Christ. You are crossing over in a good way. Yes. Obeying Jesus is the key to everything. You should really know you are obeying Jesus. Because I know there are instances when we go, Oh, I love Jesus, but I can't stand so and so. Remember, this is what Paul was also saying. We really love God, but we can't leave Stephen preaching about Jesus Christ. Because Paul didn't know Jesus Christ. Because if you don't know God, you will not know the Trinity. The key is knowing God. If you know God, if you learn more about God, you will know in God there is God, there is Jesus, there is the Spirit of Truth. So now Paul didn't know that the Spirit of Truth was now using Stephen and he was now going along with the Jewish. You see that? So the key, you need to learn more about God. The key is obeying Jesus Christ. Paul's crossover was real. Yes, he obeyed Jesus. He obeyed the spirit of truth on hearing him. That was real. Can you listen to verse 7 of uh, Acts 9? It says, And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless. Those men who were taking Paul to Damascus, they stood speechless when they saw him falling on the ground and then hearing the voice that was now speaking to Paul, yes. So that is evidence that this happening was real. Yes. So you see, it was real. Only Paul could see and hear Jesus' voice at that time. Yes. They saw, they then saw Paul, then Saul arose from the ground. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. That was real. He didn't say anyone. But these, these men, they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight. He neither ate, he neither drank. Three days without seeing, without eating, without drinking. Those three days, they were an indication of Paul's crossover. Mm-hmm. So how long was your crossover? Was it a few minutes? Was it a few days? Is it going to take the whole year? you trying to cross over to Jesus Christ. Yes. If you start believing in Jesus, if, you, if he speaks and then he sees you are listening, he sees, he sees you are learning from him, he will make you quickly cross over. Because the crossover, it means you just need to cross over and start doing God's work. That's what Paul did. Yes. So Paul went for three days without sight, no eating and no drinking. This was just like Jonah, you know, Jonah who was sent to Nineveh. Jonah 1, this is 1 to 17. He went through this crossover as well. He was told to go to Nineveh and he said he's going to go to Tashish. And on the way, Jesus decides to do what he did to Paul as well. Yes, Jesus just decided, God decided he's going to be swallowed by fish. And it is in that fish that he starts believing in God. He starts believing, now I have to follow God. Now I have to listen. I have to believe in God. I have to start learning what God is saying. I don't have to reason out because God has reasoned out already. Because sometimes we say, I just wanted to reason out. Yes, how can you send me to Nineveh? I don't like those people. Yes, you don't like them, but God likes them. Yes, you don't reason out. Yes, Paul, you didn't need to reason out. You just needed to go to Damascus and start preaching about Jesus Christ. You don't have to go there and make them stop simply because they are more Jewish people. It's not about races. It's all about God. So God is saying you don't have to reason out. He reasons out. He tells us what to do. And we have to listen. We have to learn. 
and then we can spiritually grow that's the process this process never ends we have to continually listen to god and then when we are wrong we just have to repent because we can see paul as we keep reading he keep, he goes back now to repenting he goes back now to confessing telling people that he was going against the ministry of jesus christ he goes back to mention these words using his own mouth because most crossovers in us today they don't become real crossovers because we don't confess and then we don't repent we just tell ourselves oh yes i've received jesus christ oh he knows i'm here oh yes he knows you are there when he came in the beginning of beginning his ministry he came he knew people were there just like you today but knowing they were there he just had to he just had to keep on telling people repent repent because for you to come to heaven you need to come as clean people repent put down all the sins you need to come into the righteous so this is what is needed for a real crossover if you want to cross over to jesus if you want to cross over to going to heaven yes you need to repent so those were days for communicating with this truth communicating with god communicating with jesus christ we are talking about jonah of nineveh when the fish spit him out <laughs> Jonah had accepted God's words. So he needed to be closed in that fish. You see? So don't let God close you somewhere. Don't let God take you to the ground. Don't make him make you fall. And then you go blind and then you start listening to him. We can just simply listen to God. Simply accepting his God. Simply accepting he is my creator. All that he says is good. All that he says will take me to salvation. We need to learn more about God so that we move according to what Jesus wants because we just have to obey Jesus. So Jesus was with God at the time of his resurrection. Why I'm mentioning about this is because he also went for three days. Remember when he was crucified, he was then is as it is written dead for three days paul was also for three days blind and jonah was also for three days in the tummy of a fish so it's those three days you need to communicate with god so god needed now you know with jesus we just know jesus was god he knew what he was doing in these three days is time out <laughs> god takes you away from the world so paul became blind so that he can only see god and communicate with god communicate with jesus what jesus wanted was just communication with them too yes so you also need communication with jesus christ yourself close yourself out from everything else and just keep knowing that there is no need to cry about everything else that's going around. Because Paul also had things going around him. He was trying to fight for tradition, remember, for the Jewish culture. This is why he wanted to stop Christianity. But now when he was speaking with Jesus, all that was needed now was just to receive Jesus' instructions. There were instructions there. Nothing to do what he was planning about, you see? nothing to do with what jonah was planning planning because jonah wanted to go to tashish we don't know for what but what now god wanted whilst jonah was in that tummy of a fish was real communicating with 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 jonah so we need to also look at this we don't need punishment so that we start crossing over to jesus we don't need to be in these places where we feel now we are very uncomfortable. And that's when we will be forced by those circumstances. Now there's nothing to do. Now we just have to listen. Because that's what I keep thinking about Paul. Yes. He felt now I can't say. I can't really say no. Now I have to say yes. <laughs> because I can't say anyway. Yes. So it doesn't have to be like that cross over to jesus in a willing heart yes go to jesus in a good way 
you should go to him in a good way because you know he is the creator yes pray to him the biggest word is do not cry about what is surrounding you because it will keep happening anyway funerals will always be there you will always be lacking money on earth you will always be losing jobs you will always maybe lose the good opportunities that you thought you would have in your life things will change yes you will marry but maybe you end up divorcing the person who used to be good in, in your life could end up being a bad person as well things change that's what i want to tell you but as things are changing just know that jesus is saying where are you and paul answered saying what do you want me to do <laughs> so you answer now to god after everything that is happening your biggest question to god in 2023 God, what do you want me to do? Get that job specification for yourself from God. What are you supposed to do in that job? Yes, it is good to you get something written because if you speak to Jesus, he will answer. We have seen Paul's conversion and in that conversion, we have seen that Jesus is speaking to Paul and Paul is answering Jesus. So these things can be doable. They can happen. I said in John 16 that um, the spirit of truth will come. The spirit of truth will be conversing with you. You talk and they respond. They talk and you respond. And that's a two-way communication that God wants with you. Because when you're speaking with the spirit of truth, you're speaking to Jesus, you're speaking to God himself. So you can speak to God. I know people have always asked, how do I speak to God? Well, through the Holy Spirit. Through the spirit of truth he will answer you yes so what does paul's crossover mean to us what does paul's crossover mean to us what does it mean to you yes crossover in spirit of god that's what it means he crossed over but in god's spirit he accepts he accepts god's spirit because it's the spirit's starts talking to him he responds and then we hear him going eh, who are you lord he's shaking he doesn't know what to do he is surprised he is wondering but he crossed over in the spirit of god that's the best thing we have to learn what does it mean to us well i have to cross over in the spirit of god cross over for the best is God like is as God like Paul did in Acts 9 6 Lord what do you want me to do when you have heard what you're supposed to do do not turn back to where you came from yes I'm sure we wouldn't be reading about Paul today if he had crossed over and then sat down and started thinking I'm already a rabbi and I have let down the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. I have let down Judaism. But he didn't think of all that. He thought of future. He thought of salvation. He thought of the person who created him. That's what he thought. And he kept going forward. So do not go back. Don't go back. Do not sign on into the doctrine of eternal punishment. You know when punishment comes, God's punishment comes. You know when, when you die, the punishment is eternal. It doesn't end. Paul was called by Jesus Christ and he surrendered to him. So you need to surrender. Surrendering is needed. Give yourself fully to Jesus. Be called and please surrender just surrender because we we see surrendering in acts 9 on the road to damascus when paul is going on the road to damascus we see him surrendering to jesus he listens he learns and he starts growing surrendering is crossing over to jesus christ so cross fully Cross willingly, that's surrendering. Cross over to Jesus. 
that's the biggest 2023 is it 2023 resolution yes because we always ask ourselves what are your resolutions well the biggest resolution to you is cross over to jesus <laughs> that's the resolution that's the one we have for 2023 imagine the prayer paul did during the three days of no sight no food no drink because with jesus yes he went for three days he was crucified died for three days we will all say oh he didn't need to eat he didn't need to drink it he didn't need to see anyway but paul was alive he was alive with no he no sight no food no drink what kind of prayers did he do in those three days so i was taking myself i also need to you to take yourself into that situation where you have met jesus now you are blind and you don't know the outcome what will happen in the end what are your prayers like because he has been told you are going to see someone else who's not me who's also being used by the spirit of truth and they will talk to you and he's waiting for this person and what are your prayers Whilst you are waiting for this person, having received a message from Jesus Christ, who you just saw hours ago, you have never believed in this person. What are your prayers going to be like? That's what I want you to go through. Let's all now pray. And as we are praying, you are praying as Paul. That is the prayer that I suppose Paul did in those three days. Let's all pray. Father God, I receive this chance of life to make things right. I know I have been lying all my life that I love you. But I just realized that I had not started loving you and obeying you, Father. For I have persecuted your people on earth through spreading unhappiness to them. I have persecuted the church through speaking bad against it. I have made everybody to stop rejoicing in you, as always. As you touch me now, Father, in spirit, I ask that my eyes open in your spirit. I want to do everything you will command I do. I am now yours, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.